today I've been asked to share my story of how we made the decision to change our business model so we could tackle one of the key issues that we were seeing from our social enterprise, better access to broadband and more scalable access to broadband in emerging markets. So we started in Invenio. There were three founders, uh, 2004, were from Silicon Valley. We had a simple idea. How could we use the same technology that existed today get it to work in challenging and rural environments across the developing world to help people and organizations get better access to help technology transform their lives. We figured out, fast forward a number of years, 2012, and we'd figured out our model. It was a project-based model. Uh, it was a, we were a small team, but we worked very closely with in-country entrepreneurs. So we worked together to deliver projects ranging from solar-powered computer labs across Uganda to connectivity to a small island. But things were changing. Technology was changing. More, and be more better technologies were coming up from, from Intel and from other computer companies. And it was becoming, technology was becoming much more mainstream, even in places like the Maasai Mara. Increasingly, we weren't just getting asked for computer projects to integrate those projects. We were getting access, asked for access to the internet because computers and sustainability were not enough. The big possibility was combining those with access to the internet and information. There still wasn't a lot of awareness about how little access existed and how much it could transform lives. But around 2011, the UN declared that internet access was a human right. And that was kind of a catalytic time uh, where we, see, we saw a lot of development organizations and technology communities start to rally around the importance of internet access. Invenio, our organization, was able to leverage that and really get a lot of support from companies here, from Google and Cisco, to look at what models might work in extending better access to internet in many challenging environments. Like the picture here, we worked in Haiti to extend access right after the earthquake and beyond. But as 2012 closed, we started to see that there was an issue in our model. We were very project focused. Get technology and, and computers out. Get internet access out for a very specific thing. But internet access is really a utility. It's a shared resource. So that really made us think, what are we going to do? Um, the funding started to go to the next new thing um, because everyone figured that the, the the internet access issue would be solved by mobile players. So we had to decide what could we do, or what should we do. So we doubled down and we said, if it's not going to work in our current social enterprise, not-for-profit model, is there a business case? We knew intuitively that there were issues. Everywhere we looked, there were issues with access and cost. This is a great example that's from today. We also saw a lot of the big players like Google, this is a picture of Google Loon, and Facebook, and Intel, and Cisco, all, straight, all try and start to figure out how to crack the model of getting better access out more affordably. So we knew we were onto something. So we decided it was worth a try. <laughs> and so we had to decide on what model we would use. But we realized that the project model wouldn't work we had to decide what could work. So we transitioned from a project-based model to a technology-based model. Now that might sound a little bit um, kind of confusing because we were in technology, but we looked at how we could use software and our expertise and our local partners around the world to help ISPs get to market and scale through the software and the capacity to let other players take over internet access. This is a picture of our first customer that just launched in August. We went in northern Uganda, a former war-torn area, and worked with a small social enterprise to go from zero to complete technical and commercial launch in just 12 weeks. So, and they're not only, we not only launched in 12 weeks, but they're delivering the most affordable internet access in entire Uganda. So we're not out of the woods yet, but we do see a path as a for-profit. And we think that the for-profit model is, a truly, is truly the way to scale to drive better, affordable internet access in emerging markets. So my question is, how do you convince old and new funders that a social enterprise, a nonprofit social enterprise at that, 
can spin out of for-profit that can be for-profit and viable.